Hey folks, hey, this is uh, Matthew Bollinger. Um, this is a video that is essentially kicking off this course uh, that is all about HTML and CSS, which makes up web design. Um, I kind of wanted to start with a brief introduction because this is a, a fully 100% virtual course. So there's actually gonna be less um, of the, the verbal back and forth, um, but in a sense, I'm still gonna be talking to you guys through these videos. Um, if you've already been working with me in other art design classes, I'm really glad to have you back. If you are new to my teaching style, um, don't sweat it, you'll acclimate quickly. Um, and, uh, and, and everything is, pretty transparent as far as um, what you need to be doing. You know, um, <clears throat> a little bit about me. I uh, I was an art student many, many years ago. Um, I graduated with my BFA in 2002 from the University of New Mexico. And I was, I, I was doing a lot of different things at the time. I was doing printmaking. I was working on paper, you know, with drawing. I was um, thinking about painting and taking painting courses. Um, I, I, I ended up kind of sort of jumping around a lot and trying a lot of different things. And uh, I still kind of do that, actually. I'm still very interdisciplinary. Um, so following my BFA, uh, it was actually difficult for me to find work I'm not going to lie and I try to be transparent about that with students as well which is why I think that this course is really really important and, and I'll come to that reason here in a little bit um, but <clears throat> with a BFA you know I had I had these creative skills but I wasn't sure how to flip those creative skills um, in 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 essentially an economy that that needed expertise expertise and technical um, uh, know-how. I actually didn't figure that out until a little bit later. So, you know, I spent some years doing odd jobs. Um, you know, I worked at, I uh, did social work actually for several years. So working with homeless kids in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I taught English overseas in Korea. Um, at some point I kind of, I, I realized I was spending too much time in the workforce, not thinking about being creative or thinking about art enough. And that was a real problem for me. I'm, I'm giving you guys this information because I think it might be valuable to you moving forward. Just to kind of share my, you know, my experience. And it connects with HTML and CSS, of course. Um, so I ended up going to uh, San Francisco after working, uh, just kind of doing my thing for two or three years. I decided I wanted to get an MFA in painting so I applied for the program. I put together a portfolio. I documented everything really beautifully with the help of uh, with a professor at, at UNM. And I got accepted. I went out there and I did a year. And believe it or not, I actually was really inspired by the city and some urban studies courses that I was taking out there. And so I ended up coming back to Albuquerque to study architecture, uh, to pursue a master of architecture. And I did that for three and a half years. And then um, after, you know, things just, you know, life has a way of kind of working out in unexpected ways. But I, my plan was to get a job in architecture, but the economy tanked. And folks with even like five, seven years of experience in an architecture office were having trouble getting jobs. And furthermore, they were having trouble getting jobs that really paid enough. And so um, my next plan was like, I, I was like, okay, well, I think I'm going to go and finish my MFA. So I did one year before I studied architecture. And then I did another year of my MFA after the fact. So I was in graduate school for quite a few years, uh, honestly, five and a half, six years. I was studying really, really hard and just working, uh, you know, just crazy hours. You know, uh, architecture school really taught me to be focused and to be rigorous, you know, in, in everything that I do. And so, um, you know, that's one of my goals, actually, with all of my students that I work with, is that you just develop these, these uh, habits to really focus 
and commit yourself rigorously to your work because it's really important in order for you to be successful down the road. Um, and so after I finished my MFA in San Francisco, I came back to Albuquerque again because I love Albuquerque. I love New Mexico. And the truth is San Francisco is a very, very expensive city. And I just couldn't, I couldn't hack it. You know, I was working as an architectural intern out there, but I wasn't making great money. So I decided, okay, you know, I, I'd like to go back to New Mexico and be closer to, you know, things that I'm familiar with. <clears throat> well, when I got back to New Mexico, I, I was trying to find work and it was difficult again because, you know, sometimes those skills, you know, you really have to work to build your portfolio and to be ready uh, for that moment when you graduate. And that's why I think that this cl class is so important. The truth is I came back to Albuquerque and even with my two degrees in hand, I had trouble finding the right job. And so I decided to teach myself some new skills, some technical skills. I went online and and reviewed YouTube videos. I just kind of, I, I looked at websites that were really bad at, at the time and I redesigned them and I started using those as examples for my portfolio moving forward because I was trying to develop a web portfolio to get a web job because I knew that would pay some money. Um, so I did that for about two, three, at most, maybe four months, really teaching myself HTML and CSS, hard coding. And uh, then I ended up getting a job at Navajo Technical University as the webmaster. And from there, I really just kind of learned and learned and learned. Um, my background in art and design and architecture really helped a lot because I was familiar with software I was familiar with user experience. Um, I just kind of had this intuitive sense about how things should work, but I was also looking at website examples. Um, this whole story is meant to reinforce the importance of the next five weeks for you, because if you really focus and you, you might really fall in love with HTML and CSS, because it really is beautiful, even if you're a painter, or you're a photographer, or you're in the cultural arts program weaving. Um, there's this beautiful structure and aesthetic to HTML and CSS uh, that, that I really enjoy, and I want you to hopefully enjoy it as well. Um, we are going to, this these first five weeks, we're going to be taking baby steps. The whole entire course is really about just kind of learning about HTML and CSS a little bit later. And we're going to be using, we're going to be developing a, a CV or a resume uh, as a working practical uh, experience to learn that information. Um, I still use HTML and CSS today. I don't design big websites anymore, just because I, I, um, I've, I, I've switched gears, so to speak. But I still have my own website um, and. It's actually driven by WordPress, but even in WordPress, you have to know a little bit about HTML and CSS. And so in a way, I'm kind of priming you with, you know, some, I'm, I'm getting your feet wet a little bit um, uh, with this web uh, knowledge to eventually uh, get you to a point where you're comfortable uh, using HTML and CSS in a WordPress application. And by the way, um, if you also want to know a little bit more about me, um, a good place to start is is really to look at my website um, and and the work that I do. And so that's MatthewBollinger.com. I, I think that as artists, as visual artists, we can talk a lot about who we are and, and where we come from. But a real quick solution to someone really understanding who I am and, and how I think is to simply just um, show them some of the work that I do. Um, actually, uh, if you go to my website and you go to CV or curriculum vitae, that will take you to a page with code. 
that is actually a really good working and living example of something that I would like all of you to be working on for the next five weeks. And it's going to be different and unique for each of you, but you could use my uh, CV as a precedent or as an example. I, I talk, I use that buzzword a lot, precedent. In, in my classes, all of my classes. Um, so this is one possible precedent and this is all HTML code. Okay, so I can select it here. So um, you know, this is a link, that's an HTML code link leading to a PDF of my CV. I've provided the code to tell the browser to open it in a new window here so that you don't leave my website, but it opens up a new window. These are all simple things that you're going to be learning in this class, and they're extraordinarily valuable for you moving forward. Because um, uh, when you're a working visual artist, you, you wear so many hats. You're a web designer because you will have to have a website for yourself. You're, you, you have to market yourself. You have to learn to communicate about your work. Um, you know, whether that be the about page, you have to have a biography and a statement, you know, about the type of work you do and the process, the processes that you implement. All of that is very, very important. So my goal, you guys, is to get you all to a point where you're working towards uh, an online web presence, uh, first and foremost for yourself but it might lead to other opportunities. You might find yourself in need of work, okay, or a job. And that's why I, I again, you guys, HTML and CSS, at the time I needed a job so badly and HTML and CSS really saved my life. Uh, it gave me a path forward. And so I'm eternally grateful for this very simple thing called HTML and CSS. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, and then I've been teaching here at Diné College for about six and a half years. Um, I, I had two different positions previously as webmaster. One was at Navajo Technical University. I did that for two years. And by the way, when I showed up to Navajo Tech, they did not really have a website at all. And so I, it, it was nice because I, I was able to build it from the ground up. So I got to make all the decisions myself, which was really um, a privilege. When I switched jobs and I went to Eastern New Mexico University, I was working in a marketing office. And so the, it was a little bit different. I was working with graphic designers. I was working with a marketing director. I was working with uh, folks that developed content for the website. Um user experience, uh, consultants, et cetera, et cetera, because the website was very important to the institution because that was essentially their primary marketing tool to bring students into the school. Um, you can think of, excuse me, I'm drinking coffee. You can think of your website as something similar. It's your primary marketing tool to show the world what you're doing visually with your artwork. And if you, it's a working document, it's always going to change. Uh, you're gonna develop some basics for your website moving forward. Like, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're looking at precedents and good examples um, moving forward. But, but in general, you should expect your website to always be growing almost sort of as a, a living document. And uh, your CV, by the way, is going to do the same thing. Um, here on Blackboard, there are some, a few primary things that I need everyone to do right off the bat. I need everyone to have the required textbook and it's um, HTML and CSS design and build websites, John Duckett. Uh, and it was actually published quite a few years ago. Look at it, it says 2011 here. That indicates I mean, H HTML and CSS has made some, some subtle changes, but it's actually remained, um, uh, the core of HTML and CSS has remained consistent, okay? And so don't let this date scare you too much, all right? You're still gonna get what you need out of this class for a, a contemporary context. 
<clears throat> this book is really important. You can buy it for 30, 35, or 40 bucks new. You can easily go on eBay and get it for $4.99. Um, and also, uh, once upon a time, there was a PDF of this book floating around the interwebs. And so if you do a search uh, and include the search parameter PDF, you might get lucky, okay? Um, so, but I, I still have a physical copy of this book. And the reason being is because HTML and CSS, it's kind of something that you familiarize yourself with, how it works. Um, but occasionally you need a reference uh, a textbook nearby to kind of remind yourself or refresh yourself. And so I actually still keep this near my desk just to kind of take a look at it every once in a while. It's a really great book. I've been using it for years, especially here at Dene College, uh, successfully. Okay, so that's the book. You need a computer. Um, you There's no way to be successful in this class if you don't have the computer. And you can't get it one weekend or two weeks in or three or four weeks in. If you do that, you're going to fall behind. And falling behind in any of my courses is really, really risky, okay? Because I, again, I'm here to teach you guys to be rigorous in your actions and thinking. Uh, and so I am going to work you guys, okay? Um, please don't let that scare you away. Work is your friend, okay? Um, I, I get up every day and think about all the wonderful work I'm going to do, whether it's work on a painting or work on a website <laughs> or work in my backyard watering my tomatoes, Okay, so work is your friend, and I want everyone to just sort of fall into line with that sort of passion. Um, if you need a computer, you can contact the DC IT department. I did email out, I believe, um, this PDF that needs to be filled out. It does require my signature and a little bit of my help. So uh, if, if you do need a loaner computer from the IT department, you'll need my signature and you'll need to fill out this form. Uh, these are the links to fill out um, uh, a DC IT uh, work order or ticket, because not only do you need the computer, but you also need the software. Um, HTML and CSS is open source. It's free, mm -hmm. but you do need an editing application. A lot of these editing applications are actually free and open source as well. My preferred one, that I would like for you to be using in this class so that we can all be on the same page is called Brackets. And I've left the link there for you. Um, it used to be owned by Adobe, but Adobe just kind of wanted to put it standalone and for free and downloadable for all folks. And by the way, that's when I was looking for work or trying to figure out how to move forward, it was, so, it was such a pleasure because I didn't have to buy special software I didn't, all I had to do, you can even use text edit or notepad on a PC to make HTML documents. And so one thing I really love about HTML and web design period is that it's really open and democratic. In fact, there are a lot of folks who choose not even to pursue formal education and they just become experts at web design and they're able to get jobs and find clients and have very, very lucrative careers. Obviously that takes a lot of um, uh, discipline and focus. And so again, you know, that's one of my goals for this class. I want all of you to succeed, uh, whether it be in your, in your visual art careers or your design careers. Uh, and maybe you'll have to um, do some technical design work uh, during the day and then when you get home or on the weekends you have more time to pursue your visual art careers as well and so a lot of artists have to do that it's just a fact um, I do have a syllabus here it's downloadable I, I would like for you to review it and answer these brief questions um, <clears throat> uh, this is the summer 2023 schedule it might change dependent on the semester that you're registered for this course but in general, there are eight modules. This is actually a little bit untrue because there's a module zero that we're going to be talking about today. And that really kickstarts your familiarity with uh, the software and, and using HTML in a very, very simple way. 
Uh, but this maps out the eight modules or projects that we'll be running through. And you can see it starts um, uh, on, it basically lasts for five weeks, 528 uh, to 629. Okay, so that's that. Um, let's take a look at the PDF. So I'm gonna come over here and I want you guys to pick something else up too. Um, Let's see, hope you guys can see that okay. It, as a designer, I got used to creating project folders. Um, if you actually look at all of my, um, if I backtrack a little bit, I have a folder called art design and I have all of my projects um, organized by year have everything kind of ready to go. Um, I have project folders, essentially. And whether they're digital assets or diagrams or process images of paintings and drawings I'm working on, everything eventually goes into these project folders. It's actually a good habit to get into because down the road, you are going to be working on your website more diligently. You're going to be growing your website and you're going to need visual assets and you're going to need to be able to find them or know where they're located. And so developing this kind of a practice is really valuable. Okay. So for example, uh, it's 2023. Um, and uh, this was, this is a project that I've started. You know, I, I started with the images that I was working with, an Illustrator file, and I have a quick little diagram that I even like photographed and put into that folder. You never know what's going to be useful um, you know, down the road. Five, I mean, so I can go back. I wish I had more, actually. That's why I'm telling you all this. But even if I go back to the 90s, I do have drawings documented, but I don't have process images which is kind of a shame. And so um, the more you have in these project folders, the better off you'll be because you're 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 documenting yourself. Uh, you never know. You might be a famous artist down the road. Someone might be very interested in in the work that you were doing and the manner in which you were um, completing it. And you can uh, you can keep all of these artifacts well organized in a project folder for yourself and the future down the road. Uh, so when I started to teach, I kind of did the same thing. I created course folders. So you can kind of see all the different courses that I've been teaching at Denae College over the years. Down here is Web Design 1 and Web Design 2. And here is Project 0, Project 1, Project 2. You can even see, by the way, I'm I'm so crazy about an OCD about documenting things. I I keep your work. And so these are some projects that were given to me and uploaded to Blackboard. I downloaded them and I put them in a folder. This one says 2021 summer. And so um you can you can plan on me doing that, folks. I I look at all of your work and um and uh the details aren't aren't lost on me, you know, regarding your hard work. I am paying attention. I want all of you to know that, okay? So so um, don't think that these things are just being uploaded to Blackboard and they're not being uh, reviewed because I certainly am reviewing them. Um, so Project Zero is where we're at now. And by the way, if we go back to, to Blackboard really quick, notice there are eight projects or modules and there are essentially eight projects or modules here. And then this additional one I'm calling project zero, which which does count as a project, by the way, as far as, far as points. But that uh, is something really just to kind of get your feet off the ground and moving with this business. Because I, I know how all of you might be feeling right now. You're thinking, gosh, I've never coded in my life. I'm not sure if I can do this. Believe me. You can do it, and it's so easy, and it's so much fun. You just have to make sure to um, to stay on track with all of your responsibilities, okay? 
Um, and so here is the PDF, which I'm going to bring up for us to review really briefly. It says Web Design One, create a simple web page called Hello World. The Hello World example is um, that you can go to YouTube and just type in Hello World HTML example, and many, many um, uh, videos will pop up. So if mine isn't good enough, or if you think you need more context, you're welcome to just continue down that rabbit hole into YouTube and find additional videos. <clears throat> um, so th the main project purpose here is says introduce the HTML editor, introduce the basic process of creating a document, et cetera, et cetera. It's all there. Again, I'm just trying to get your feet off the floor. Um, I really, you guys, this class, you can't, you, you I'm going to keep you busy for five weeks and you're going to thank me afterwards because you're going to have this incredible knowledge uh, moving forward that is not only applicable for your own visual art portfolio online, but could possibly open some doors for work down the road as well. Um, right now, here's an example. Right now, Danae College um, has a, a relatively new website. When I first got to Danae College, their website was pretty bad. I'm going to be honest. The user experience, everything was horrible. And then they did hire someone probably down in Phoenix, Arizona to develop a WordPress website for them and uh, and plug in all the content or migrate the content and organize things. They That contractor was probably paid quite a bit of money for, for doing something in my mind is very, very easy. The, the issue that I want to bring up is that I mean, these are really high paying jobs or or contracts that could possibly going to that could possibly go to folks uh, in the community. So in the Diné College community, whether that be a student or even an individual living in Lukachikai or Chinle or somewhere nearby, there's no reason why Diné College should have to look outside of the community to solve these problems. I want them to call you to 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 solve these problems. Um, just keep that in mind, all right? Um, I always have a project synopsis uh, for all of my courses, by the way. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. Uh, the first project is essentially a step towards being comfortable with the idea of getting started with and using HTML on your computer. Completing this project means that you have a beginner's grasp of how to set up and complete a web project. There will be eight total in this course. If you don't complete this quick introductory project with a certain degree of confidence, future projects might be frustrating. I, I should rephrase that, will be frustrating. If you guys wait to do this, until later next the latter part of next week you're going to fall behind you need to do it now that's why i'm giving you guys this project before this summer semester even starts it's something that you can do very very quickly and then you'll you'll immediately realize this is so easy so just trust me okay you got to do it though if you don't do it you're going to run into a problem and i'm going to show you exactly how to do it and uh it's going to be easy um so you can look in the book. In the book, they do have some pages that refer to this, but I'm going to show you guys because I'm the kind of person who really learns by kind of seeing and doing. Uh, the reading aspect helps, um, but mostly I learn by um, by seeing and doing. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, I, I remember years ago, I took a calculus class. I needed to take calculus for my architecture degree, and I was a little nervous about it. Now I'm I'm okay with technical details, but calculus, I had never done that before. The only way I was able to get through that course is by practicing the equations over and over and over and over again. Uh, I had a great instructor that helped too, but the real truth is that I was able to get through all of that because I was really focused and I didn't go four or five days without thinking about calculus. <laughs> I was doing it almost daily and I passed the course. Um, and so um, this is a very fast five week course. Uh, I almost kind of think it's better to deliver HTML and CSS that way, real fast, almost kind of like ripping off, you know, a band aid quickly. 
you know, or, or, or that sort of metaphor. <clears throat> In order to do this project, you need your laptop, which is why I've been sending out the emails and reminding folks and practically begging everyone to be prepared for the class. Uh, so you need a laptop, and on that laptop, you need to have this free brackets HTML editor software installed. Um, again, uh, you can get the loaner computer through the IT department and filling out that form, and you can submit a ticket to have brackets installed on that loaner computer because uh, you need to have administrator authorization to make changes on a Diné College computer. Um, if you al already have a computer, uh, that's great. Um, brackets is not heavy duty or heavy load software. And so you can just download it and get it going. Okay. So with that being said, let's minimize this for a moment. We've talked about um, saving your work. And again, I'm, I'm going to touch on that one more time. Remember, I have a project I have a course called Web Design One, or a folder, excuse me, called Web Design One. I would advise that you do the same thing. And within that folder, you should create project folders. So project zero can be the first one that you create. Within that project zero folder, download the PDF that's on Blackboard, put it in that folder so that you can review it. Start developing these practices of being, um, of, of documenting things. There's nothing more. If you're an artist, documenting things is extraordinarily important. Okay. So you have that PDF, you've dropped it in there, and then you're actually going to develop uh, your, your files and you're going to save your files in this location. Okay. And so I'm actually giving you guys the Project Zero example. I'm giving it to you because I want you to be, to develop the confidence. I, I, I'm not trying to hide any tricks to the trade. I mean, HTML and CSS, it's the same for all of us if we're, if we're web designers. And so I'm giving you these documents, but I also want to show you. So for example, if I click on brackets, I can come up here to file new. And then I can go over to the project PDF. And I want I want you to see or or review this text right here. And you can go in there and grab it if you'd like. And so unfortunately, the way that I've formatted this. Okay. So there's an opening and then there's a closing. What I'm doing right now is I'm showing you the, the bare bones skeletal structure of an HTML web page. Okay. And so, right here with this opening tag, I'm telling the browser, I'm telling, like, um, if you're using Safari or Microsoft Edge or uh, Mozilla, any or uh, you know, what it, Google Chrome, any of those browsers, I'm telling the browser, hey, this is an HTML file. All the code that follows is HTML and CSS code, okay? And so uh, that's why this is really important. So there's an opening again, and then there's a closing. And the closing is indicated by that little slash right there, all right? Next one is, uh, there are two sections to, um, to a web document. There's the head section, and believe it or not, this is a section that is almost a little bit kind of invisible. And then there's a body section. And in the body section of the website, you can put code that is visible. So you can't necessarily see this, but you can see that. It's gonna make a little bit more sense as we proceed into the semester. But what I wanna do is I wanna just establish these other sections in my code. So there's the opening and the closing. And I want to grab the body tag with an opening and a closing. By the way, all of this is in your textbook. It's on the PDF 
and the textbook, and you can just plug it in manually. When you're doing, when you are typing things into HTML and in, into the software, one thing you need to realize is that HTML is actually very, uh, it's kind of unforgiving. And I'll show you why here in a little bit, but you have to be very exact um, with how you're typing things out. If you aren't exact, um, things aren't gonna work the way that you'd expect. So just kind of keep that in mind. 99% of the time when things aren't working uh, with web work, it's human error. It's it's not the machine. It, it's the human, okay? And you just don't take it personally, but you just made a mistake and you got to go double check it. Of course, you know, in the tech world, sometimes they call that, you know, you you have a bug in your code, right? A bug. Uh, that's that's just, you know, another word of uh, way of saying that you have, you've made a mistake. Um, the title is really, really important. And th that does go in the head portion of the document. Um, and so let's see, I'm, let's call it my, my first, uh, first web page, uh, to start with. Okay. I want you guys to notice something else and it's, I am going to be a real stickler about this throughout the, the course. You need to structure things so that you can see. Notice how when I initially had everything oops, just flush to the left, it's kind of difficult to read what's going on, right? But when I start creating these relationships by tabbing over, I can see that title is actually inside of this head portion of the document, which is living within the HTML tags of the document. So there's an opening and a closing, but notice head opens, then the title, there's all these tags are kind of living within each other. Title also has a closing over here. So look at this opening, opening, closing, and then I close out head because all of this is living within the head portion of the document and the head portion of the document is living within the HTML portion of the document. So um, what I've found, you know, over the years, especially teaching at Diné College is there's this almost familial or family relationship with the tags. And so I always jokingly say the HTML tags are kind of like your Che, all right? And uh, maybe, you know, these other tags are kind of like your aunties, right? And then, you know, some of these other tags are your cousins, you know, or your friends or, or other, you know, close, close relationships and family. And so, you know, there's, there's this hierarchy and the structure to how things um, look visually. So I want to tab this over because body, the body portion of the document is living within the HTML portion of the document. So see how that makes sense? It kind of develops this nice bell curve. Okay. All right. Uh, so moving on. Now we're going to just kind of plug some simple code. And I know it kind of sounds silly. Um, but welcome to my first web page is the header tag, H1. And then some paragraph text indicated by a simple P says, this is an HTML page I am creating using text edit notepad. You can, all, you can use text edit or notepad, um, but I'm asking that you use brackets. Um, but again, I, I had mentioned that HTML and CSS is very democratic, right? Uh, and so you don't need fancy software to do it. Although why not use the fancy software if it's free, right? So uh, text edit notepad period. And uh, just because I, I am, I try to be a fun instructor. I am a goofy goober. So I'm gonna copy that. And by the way, copy and paste is your best friend. So on a Mac, it's uh, command C, command V, command C, command V. On a PC, if I'm not mistaken, it's control C, control V, control C, Control V. You got to get into those uh, those habits. Um, it'll it'll save you time. Work smarter, not harder, right? And look at the way I'm going to tab this over. Okay, 
Huh. All right. Now we actually need to save it. Let's save it. Okay. So I'm going to save this. I want to call it index, right? When you load HTML files on a hosting server and um, some of this lingo, it's new to you. It might be new to you, but a website has files that are on a server that are essentially up in the cloud or, or, or accessible anywhere and globally. And a browser is always going to go to a location first on a web page. And it's indicated by index.html. And so it's literally pretty much the home page, but you don't call it the home page. You call it index.html. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm going to save that file in my project folder or course folder, rather. So going to web design one, project zero, and there's my HTML file. I don't want to overwrite it. So I'm going to say index dash one dot HTML. And I'm going to save it. Notice how when I saved it as an HTML file, look how certain things are highlighted now. All the tags are blue. And all the text is just simple, you know, grayscale black. And so this becomes diagrammatic. Look at the beautiful bell curve that has happened here. This is the, the this is the a basic HTML structure. And so please don't forget this. You have the HTML opening and the HTML closing. You have the head por portion of the document. Within the head portion of the document generally things are invisible or not visible on the page. Technically, that's not 100% true because the title of the page uh, will actually show up in the browser window. And I'm going to show you that here in a second, okay? <clears throat> um, the body section is where all of your visible content is going to go. And so notice how I did put uh, within the body section of the, of the HTML document, there's an H1 or a header, and it says, welcome to my first web page. And then I also added some text, paragraph text. This is an HTML page I created using text edit slash notepad, or I should put slash uh, brackets, right? I am a goofy goober. Save, command S, okay? And so get into uh, those shortcuts, those keyboard shortcuts. Of course, you can come up here and save, okay? Um, th there's another thing I wanna talk about briefly. When you're creating a web project, you need all of, it's good to have, it's good to have a file system because at some point you are going to be adding images. And, and when you add an image using code, there's a path involved or a location. Uh, and you need that location to be consistent and nearby your project folder system, if that makes sense. Uh, so if you have your HTML document connecting to images on your desktop, um, and then at some point you delete those images on your desktop, you're gonna have broken images. So again, you know, kind of keeping things organized and insulated in a project folder or a course folder is really, really important. And that's just standard practice for, for web development, okay? Um, when you are naming files, here's the other thing. That, I mean, I'm just kind of like walking you through. You guys, you know, <laughs> here's, here's the other thing. You guys, I never took a class to, to do this. I am completely self-taught with all of this. So all of this is very familiar to me, but you'll notice my teaching style is relatively fluid. And so I'm really just kind of mentoring each of you and passing on this information for you, for you to run with, okay? And for you to use um, confidently. 
Um, so going back, I, I also wanted to mention that when you do save HTML files, you need to um, use lowercase. Don't use uppercase anything. And also, I like using these dashes. So project dash zero, for example, it's just easier to read things, right? Um, the next thing I want to show you guys is... I think a good way of working in this class is to always have two things side by side. You need the browser and you need the code. Actually, I'm gonna put my code over here. I'm gonna minimize this for a second just so that we can see things a little bit more clearly. There's a reason why why I like to have these two things side by side. And so what I'm gonna do, and this is the fun part, by the way, folks. So I'm gonna go to my, you know, I'm gonna go, here's my, my finder window on a Mac, but you need to find your project folder. Here's the file that you saved. So this is, this file right here, actually it's this one, excuse me, because this is the old one, index dash one. This index index dash one HTML file is the one that we have open over here. But now we want to open it in a browser. So what I would advise you to do, and also notice how the icons have changed. It's uh, showing the Mozilla icon, but I can open this with any browser. What I usually do is I right click, open with, and then my preferred browser is Chrome. But look, it's giving me a few options here, Firefox or Chrome. But I want to, yeah, I want to use Chrome because that's my preferred browser. So there's a Blackboard, of course. And right next door, this is the browser rendering the HTML code. And look, it says, welcome to my first web page, which is an H1. And then this is an HTML page, yada, yada, yada. I am a goofy goober, right? That's this paragraph text. Now I wanna show you something. Just out of curiosity, what if I delete this P? Look at first I get an error right here, a little red mark right there that's saying, whoops, something's not right. Okay. And then if I come over here and refresh, well, nothing has changed, and guess why? Because I did not save. If I come over here and then hit Command-S, keyboard shortcut, and then come over here and hit Command-R for refresh, looking a little funny now, isn't it? See that? Now, it is still rendering it, but now you're getting that little funny part, okay? Like you know, HTML is thinking, mm, this human error I can deal with. I mean, I'll, I'll let this one slide but it's still rendering those two little marks right there. Okay, so if I put this P back, and P stands for paragraph, save it, come over here, refresh, now it's back to normal. Okay, next thing I wanna show you is, uh, first of all, um, the title. Remember I said almost everything is invisible up there, but if you, it says first web page, Look in the tab here, it says first web page. Okay, so I can change that really briefly. First web document, just for fun. Remember, you gotta save, command S, refresh. Now it's saying first web document. So you can see live those changes. And that's why it's really important to have this set up where you have your code here and then you have um, the document being rendered by the browser there, all right? Very, very important. In fact, I'm gonna, when you present your documents to me, or if you send me screenshots or, you know, whatever, you know, if, if you wanna have a Zoom session because you're having issues, uh, which, you know, I don't think, I think all of this is pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, having this set up this way really helps me to understand or have assurance that, that 
you're taking the right path to to absorb this knowledge because having these two things side by side is incredibly helpful okay so i made that change uh, you can add another line of code and uh my coffee was really strong this morning. Save, refresh, look at that. Live results. So this is the very first thing that I need each of you to do. And <clears throat> there's something else that's really important. When you're uploading documents to me, simply go to your project folder, right click, and on a Mac, you can compress. So now I've made this into a zip file to upload and for some reason, that's just a little more helpful on Blackboard. So you're kind of putting an eggshell around this HTML document before you upload, okay? And you are going to have to show me evidence of what you're doing and how things are moving forward. I, I think that really covers it um, for now. But I, again, this is such an important project or, or, or step or initial step for this course. Um, the thing I need you to do next is do some research on, on an art CV, what an art CV is. Look for precedence. Art, look, if I just type in art CV, look at there's a CV template. You know, there are all these examples out there. I gotta be honest, I have, you know, I, I think I was telling you guys earlier that I had a mentor at UNM who helped me to photograph um, my work when I was applying to graduate school. I, I, By the way, I also have a professional assets folder. And within that professional assets folder, one is called CV. If I click on CV, there is an HTML version, by the way, of my current website. So this is the code. You guys come over here. If you look on my website. And again, going back to this page right here, everything here is all the code. I've added some CSS and done a few things, but in general, it's, um, yeah, I'm still using HTML uh, for my website. So just as another reminder. Uh, anyway, where I was going with that comment was that I also, I'm pretty sure I have some precedence. Yeah, here it is right here. Somehow I came across Patrick Nagatani's CV online and I thought it just looked, and this is a guy, and you can see he was born in 1945 and uh, unfortunately uh, he did pass away like maybe four or five years ago, but shows when he was born, his education. And it's just a, a fantastic example uh, in my mind. But you can find many, many different precedents or examples for how you're going to proceed with your own resume. And even if you're you're just starting your career as an artist, maybe this isn't necessarily about who you are now. Maybe you can dream about who you want to be in the future. You know, what kind of education do you want? What kind of exhibition? Where where do you want to show, you know? And, and what do you, how do you envision the titles of those exhibitions? Anyway, you can dream. It's not a problem at all, okay? Uh, so look at those precedents because the next project or the following projects are going to be all about building this CV out of HTML and CSS. And the first step, the very first step is what we've done right here, very, very simply. And then we could review it right there. And you can have fun too. You can change the text, you can add more lines. Um, by the way, you can change, there are different types of headers, which we'll be talking about uh, here in a bit. 
I look at this, I can, instead of an H1, I can make it an H2, save, refresh, and watch how the, the scale or the size is gonna change a little bit. See how that just got a little bit smaller? That's because that's an H2, not an H1, but it's still bold, right? Instead of plain text. Um, all that information is in the book. If you want to read ahead just a little bit, but I'll leave that up to you. Right now, this is all you need to do. And you need to zip that index file, the index.html file. And uh, when you're done, you upload it to Blackboard. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.